Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Vet Surgery at Ease. So from today, we will start the pre-anesthetics. Okay. So after the pre-anesthetic, we will go for anesthetic also. Under pre-anesthetics, we will find anticholinergic drugs and sedatives. Under sedatives, we will find phenothiazines, beta-rephenones, opioids, okay, etc, etc. Then after anesthetic, we will go for barbiturates, non -all, uh, other techniques and also the dissociative anesthetics. So all these chapters are very important in anesthesiology and they are very big chapters. Okay. So you may not remember all the things. So what we will do, we will concise those. We will concise those in five headings. Okay. First one will be the introduction part in which there will, we will know some general statements or general parameters of those class of drugs. Then we will go for the systemic effects. Uh, then we will go for the mechanism of action, how they work. Okay. Next we will go for the systemic effects. Under systemic effect there will be two headings. First one is the major one that is effect on the cardiopulmonary system. For anesthesiology, the cardiovascular system and the pulmonary system, they are very important systems because you have to know the effects of the drugs on those systems and then after we will go know some other effects on other system which are for important from anesthesiology point of view or you can say from side effect point of view. After that, we will go for pharmacokinet <coughs> pharmacokinetics. So under pharmacokinetics, we will compare the different drugs in the same class on the basis of whether the onset of action, peak effect and different other parameters and also the dosages okay so these five headings you should note down in each class so that you will remember in better way and you can understand and remember it in the class itself okay so let us start our class before going to the class please you can uh, follow me in Facebook at Bhed Surgery Addis, I post different cases. Okay, all the cases I cannot post in YouTube because I don't have all the videos, but the photos are posted in Facebook and this is Instagram. Here you will find all the notes regarding the classes also and also different subjects. This is my Twitter handle. Okay, now coming to our main class, the anticholinergics. Okay, so from this is introduction. This is known as parasympatholytic drugs okay, because they cause lysis. If they follow the system, then it is mimetic. The agents which are commonly used in veterinary anesthesiology is are atropine and the glycopyrrolate. These two drugs are used in veterinary anesthesiology. You see, they are known as anti -moscarinics. Why? You see, cholinergic receptors are two types. One is nicotinic, another one is moscarinic. The atropine and the glycopyrrolate. This is atropine, this is glycopyrrol. These two drugs act on muscarinic receptor. They do not act on nicotinic receptors. That is why the proper word is anti muscarinic agents. Okay. Next, we will go for the mechanism of action. You see, first you should know some basics. Muscarinic receptors are three types the M1 receptor, the M2 receptor, and the M3 receptor. Okay. The M1 receptors are present in neurons and autonomic ganglia. When they are activated, this causes depolarization or you can say excitation. And the M2 receptors are present in heart. Okay. They are present in SA node and AB node which controls the heart rate and the myocardium which uh, controls the contractile force. So when the M2 receptors will be activated, they will cause reduction in heart rate or you can say bradycardia and they will also reduce the force of contraction. The M3 receptors are present in secretory glands like all the secretory glands, parotid gland, bronchial gland, intestinal glands, all the glands and also present in smooth muscles and endothelium. Okay, when they are activated, it will increase the production of like if it is present in parotid gland, it will increase the uh, saliva production and also it will increase the lacrimation, increase the bronchial secretion. Okay, and also it will increase the smooth muscle activity. For example, in the intestine, the smooth muscles are present in the intestine which is responsible for peristalsis. If this will be activated, then they will cause increase in peristalsis. Next, they cause vasodilation because of presence in endothelium. So, what atropine and glycopyrrolate do? They block all these receptors. The M1 receptor, M2 receptor and the M3 receptor. When they will be blocked, here it will cause sedation. Opposite of excitation is sedation. You see sedation is found in up to some degree in atropine, not in glycopyrrolate. Okay. In atropine, you will find some amount of sedation but not in glycopyrrolate. Next, 
when m2 receptors will be blocked that is called that will cause increase in heart rate which is known as tachycardia and also the force of contraction will be increased and when m3 receptors will be blocked they will reduce the secretion of glands and they will reduce the smooth muscle activity and vasoconstriction but this the effect of vasoconstriction is not so profound next effect on systems the important one is the cardiovascular system and the pulmonary system i already told in mechanism action remember this one they will act on the sn node which will increase the heart rate which is known as sinus tachycardia sinus tachycardia here one bonus point in case of xylazine see in case of xylazine it, it causes xylazine it is alpha 2 agonist we will study on alpha 2 agonist next classes in uh, succeeding classes xylazine is causes sinus bradycardia sinus bradycardia okay the effect of xylazine can be reversed by reversal agent which is basically yohimbin hydrochloride or atipomazol these two are reversal agents for alpha 2 agonist but if you don't have the yohimbin hydrochloride or atropomazole and you are finding the severe reduction in heart rate the sinus bradycardia you can give atropine which will cause sinus tachycardia okay another one i already told it will increase the force of contraction known as contractile force increase in contractile force these two effects are very important you can note down next on pulmonary system they reduce the bronchial secretions okay you know this is m3 mediated m3 receptor mediated they will reduce the bronchial secretion when the bronchial secretion will be reduced the diameter of trachea or diameter of respiratory system will increase this is relative only and there will be an increase in dead space anatomical dead space okay these are the effects on the cardiovascular and the pulmonary system because they, these two are important from anesthesiology point of view. Other effects which is basically very important when you will study anesthesiology you have to understand the side effects also. So the effects on gastrointestinal system. What is the effect? You see here the, there will be esophageal sphincter. Okay. You know the M, under M3 mediated uh, action there is reduction in smooth muscle activity. So this gastro esophageal sphincter there will be loss of tone or you can say reduction in tone of gastro esophageal sphincter which will cause gastric reflux gastric reflux another one the intestinal motility will be reduced under the influence of m3 receptor so when the intestinal motility will be reduced it will cause colic okay and this is a very major phenomena in case of horses that is why the anticholinergic are used with caution in case of horses okay next some ocular effect it causes mydriasis mydriasis and cyclopegia that is why this drug is used in caution in glaucoma patients okay apart from that you know they are the uh, decrease the secretion of glands so they will decrease the secretion of lacrimal gland okay when the lacrimal gland secretion will be decreased it will cause dry eye dry eye okay so if the animal is pre medicated with atropine you may find the use of artificial tears to motion the cornea during the operation procedure another one important i missed here there will be dry mouth because the salivary secretion will be decreased you will find dry mouth okay so these are the important other systemic effects next one the pharmacokinetics okay so the two we will compare the two drugs uh, which is used atropine and the glycopyrrolate first one the potency usually glycopyrrolate is four time more potent than the atropine you see potency means under less doses you will produce same pharmacological effect so onset of action usually same within five minute peak effect also within 20 minutes is 10 to 20 minutes and this is 20 minutes duration of action the duration of action in glycoprene is usually more 30 minute and this is 60 minute dosage dog and cat 
will find 0 0.02 to 0 0.04. You see, this is 4 times less 0 0.005 to 0 0.01. That is why glycopyrrolate is more potent. That is 4 times more potent. You see, glycopyrrolate is used in case of horses. Okay, but atropine is not used in horses because of more profound intestinal effects. Okay, in case of horses, you can use glycopyrrolate. Uh, there is a study uh, in horses where 17 horses were given glycopyrrolate. It is in the book, and uh, only one of them developed colic. So you can use glycopyrrolate in case of horses with caution, of course. And uh, ruminant and swine, you can use also atropine at the dose rate of 0 0.04 to 0 0.08 mg per kg body weight. Another one important thing in case of rabbit, rat and cat, they have an enzyme known as atropine storage, atropine storage. So this enzyme metabolized the atropine. So in these species when you will administer atropine, the atropine will be metabolized at a faster rate compared to the other species. So, this is all about the anticholinergic. I this is a very short class. You see, in this, uh, we will study all the chapters in this manner, in this concise manner, so that you can remember all the chapters easily in the class itself. You can make your own notes, okay. But you, if you want to know more, then you read the Lombard Jones Veterinary Answers and Analysis book, okay, and you will get many more knowledge also. There are some points we I deliberately uh, did not teach you because. They are not important from exam point of view also and from an sociology point of view, but you should know for your knowledge. So this is all about today. Next class we will go for the phenothiazine groups. You see after anticholinergic, the sedatives will start, the phenothiazine, butophenones and the opiates, they are basically sedatives. So we will start sedatives from next class. Till then, bye bye, take care.